is this on? Uh oh. Are we not live? Yes, we are live. Did we just did it just go live? Yes. Should I start over? Yes. Okay. No, okay. No, no, no. okay. <laughs> we are learning. That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna start over. I've already done I've already said this uh, before and I'm getting really good at saying this. So Thank you for thank you for commenting and let us know that we weren't live because we thought we were live and I was just chatting away. OK, so welcome to Tips, Tools and Techniques is you are. We are coming to you very live from the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore in Maitland, Florida. And thank you all of those who have joined us. I think I th was reading all the comments and I think the farthest away is New Mexico. So thank you so much for joining us from wherever you are. We love comments. We love questions. So please um, let us know. Thank you, Joe, Jake, for letting us know that we are live now. Yes. Um, so a couple quick announcements. Well, really just one announcement. The class, the new classes are up live on the website. You can go to sewing.net, click on the classes tab, and you have all the teachers. There's a little filter on the left. If you click on the filter, you can click on a certain teacher, Mary Janine Ibarguin, and you can see what classes, but you may want to take classes from somebody else. Um, so they're all live. The I'm teaching a pineapple technique class that um, fills pretty much every time. It's a one morning class and you're going to learn how to make a pineapple quilt. And I'm teaching my bookcase quilt. I should have pulled it off the wall and uh, brought it to show you and I forgot to do that. But anyway, that is another quilt that has been very popular making, especially at Christmas time, you want to, you've got somebody who likes books on there uh, for a Christmas gift, that would be a great gift. So those are two classes that I've done before that are popping back up again. And then I have a machine applique basics class that um, I haven't, uh, haven't ever taught it before. The first day you're going to make a real simple table runner. And the second time you come, you're going to learn how to machine applique. This is not applique with an embroidery machine. This is the applique with fusible and uh, zigzagging or some other decorative stitch around the edges. So you're gonna learn the basics of that. Um, Gainesville, Mount Dora. All right, Eagle Lake, Florida, welcome. Thank you, for, thank you for joining us. I think that's all my announcements. So we're gonna talk about this quilt behind me. Um, this pattern is called Picnic by Cluck Cluck Sew. I love her stuff. And we're going to talk about several things in regard to this quilt. The first quilt, Mark is going to put up a picture. No, no, actually not. Not yet. I need to talk about one of the things I want to talk about is choosing fabrics. Uh, a lot of people tell me that it stresses them out to try to figure out fabrics for a quilt. So I have four simple ways to choose fabric for a quilt. The first way is you walk into the store and you see this quilt. <gasps> I love this quilt. I want to make this quilt. Nine times out of 10, you want to make it exactly like it's up on the wall. And we know that. So we have made, either made kits or we've put those fabrics nearby and you could just pull the fabrics and off you go. You know, you figure out how much you need based on what size quilt you want to make and you're set to go. It's great. Um, that's number one. Number two, if um, you love a particular designer or you found a focus fabric that you really like, um, it's possible that we have pre-cuts. We rarely buy every fabric in a line, but if you buy the pre-cut, whether it's a fat quarter pack or a jelly roll or 10 inch squares or five inch squares, um, that all the fabrics in that particular line, including the fabric you love, is already cut up and then you can go find a pattern that uses those pre-cuts. So that's option number two, buy the pre-cuts. All, it all matches because it's all from that line. The third option is you find a focus fabric, and I'm just going to pull my little tortilla maker, which we'll be talking about soon. Um, and let's say, okay, so I've got these tacos. They're very cute. And I really want, um, I want to pull some red, that red, and I want to pull that green and maybe that brown. So you can go, you know, take your focus fabric around and go into our solids or reads of solids and find some fabrics that go with that focus fabric. Okay, so that's that's option number three. And then option number four is, is you've never heard me talk about this. So now we're going to put a photo up on the screen and I'm going to show you my inspiration for the colors for this quilt. Um, I was on Pinterest and I love looking at winding ways quilts. I have the AccuQuilt 
uh, dies for this quilt and I'm looking forward to making it. So I'm looking at different, different colors and different layouts and trying to figure, figure out how I want to make it. I thought, you know, I really love those colors, but I'm not ready to make a winding ways quilt with those colors, but I can use those colors to make this quilt. So that's what I did. I, I stole her, her color, her color designs. And I went into our stash of um, batiks and I found colors that, that match pretty well. I found a fun navy. Well, it's not really navy. I'm not sure what this blue is, mariner blue. I don't know. But I liked the way it went with all the other colors. It kind of matches a little bit this blue, but it's, it's not when you get up close, it's a different blue. Um, so you can choose a white, which is what she did in her pattern. She used a white background and mine came out a lot darker. I didn't think all these dark colors would work well with a light background, so I chose a dark background. So anyway, that's choice. That's option number four. There's lots of other ways to pick colors that go together. So that was just four ideas for you. If you guys have other ideas, put it in the comments for me, and we will, we will take it from there. I want to mention um, three things. We have a discount if you are purchasing um, fat, you, anything that I talk about, it's all going to be on my favorites page, which I'll mention in a minute. But if you're going to purchase it today, and if you've been here before, you know this, but your discount code that works until Sunday night is capitals TTT. Okay. And that gives you 15% off all the regularly priced notions and fabric. And I, some of my fabrics that I've used today are actually on my favorites page to make it easy for you to find. Um, the second thing is my how to get to my favorites page. Um, Mark and I were not able to figure out how to put that up in the comments. Um, this is Mark's first time and my kind of first time figuring out all the tech stuff. So do us a favor and go to wherever you found the link for this program, whether it was Facebook, whether it was an email, whether it was YouTube, whatever, there's going to be a link there for Mary Janine's favorites. So just click on that and you get to my favorites. The third thing I wanna mention is I have a handout and you can either print your handout or bring it up on a second device and just kind of scroll through. And that is the same place. Go to wherever you found my handout link and you'll find the, I'm sorry, the favorites page, you'll find my handout link, it's in the same place. So two different links, but you'll, the links will be parked in the same place. So hopefully that makes sense. If somebody else wants to copy it and paste it into the comments, that would be fine with us. We would appreciate it. Um, so I talked about the colors. I, I didn't talk about the quilting. I used a, a swirl design, just a very simple swirl design. But um, I've said this before, but when you are quilting your own quilts, you want to try to hit with your, your stitching line as many intersections as you can because when you wash and dry this quilt a lot those little mountains if they're still mountains and they haven't been nailed down they're going to get worn down in the laundry and so i try to nail down as many as i can to keep it in one piece and then finally mark did i i didn't talk about this yet have i Okay, so let's talk about this little puppy here. I asked my husband to go to, I'm not sure if he went to the Home Depot or Lowe's, but it's a piece of, it's aluminum. It's an aluminum trim, T-R-I-M, and it's one inch is wide. And I think he told me it comes in different widths, but one inch is just fine. It's 72 inches long, which is what I wanted. You could, could buy it longer. They cut it to size. Um, but what I'm going to use this for is multiple things. The first thing is when I make this quilt as, did I put the, did I put the block up? I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Let's back up here and talk about this block. So there's the block. Very, very simple sewing. You know, you sew, sew these pieces together, you sew these pieces together, and then you sew it in with the yellow. Um, you sew one, two, three of those pieces. And she tells you how to iron this, seams so everything nests beautifully because this is actually two different pieces of fabric and then finally this big piece here so all the all the instructions um, and how to cut everything um, she tells you whether you've got fat quarters or whether you have skinny quarters or whatever and all the instructions on how to sew the block are here so that's my block and there's where there's where it is right there um, 
But then when you sew them all together in rows, this is called setting blocks on point. Um, and when you do that, you're going to have a lot of extra pieces coming out the end and they have to be all trimmed off. So that's where this comes in handy. I laid out my quilt with all its raggedy edges on a, on a floor because that's where I had lots of space. And I put my metal strip down and I found the same point in every block and I marked it with chalk. I did not use this to rotary cut. I could, but I didn't want to have to deal with moving the mat around because I certainly don't have a six foot mat. So all I did was mark it with chalk and I marked all four sides. It's really nice if you have a T square or an L or something that will help you get perpendicular corners, right? 90 degree corners. And then once it was all marked with chalk, I could take it to my cutting table and just cut, you know, parts at a time because my cutting table is certainly not this big either. So hopefully that made sense. This, um, my husband actually drilled a hole for me at the top. So this hangs in the garage. If you uh, don't have a handy person with a drill or you don't have a drill, they might even be able to do that for you at the Home Desperate, the Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you go. Okay, if there's any questions, please put them in the pan. And Regina, thank you, but we're looking for the link for the favorites and for the handout. So if one of you have found the link on the place where you clicked over to this show, then that's where the links are and you can pull them up. Okay. Um, if there's any questions, I'd love to hear them. Otherwise, we're going to move on and I'm going to get a drink. So I've been talking for a little while. <laughs> and thank you for, thank you for sticking around. All right, put that there. Can't see it from there. Yes. Okay. Um, my next project, still not to the handouts. I'm going to give you everybody time to get into the handouts. Um, I was on a trip this summer. And as you may know, I love going to quilt shops, Google Maps, quilt shops near me. And I saw this, fell in love with it, asked Kelsey to order the fabric. She did. We'll talk about how to get it. But what these are, are little wall hangings, one for each month of the year. So here is March and here is April. Showers bring May flowers. Um, I, this is July and probably August. I, some of them, it's hard to know which month they are. So I think this is uh, June and July. That's the one I really wasn't sure of. The rest of them are pretty clear. Hi, happy Thanksgiving, holiday wishes. And so there was 12 different panels. Um, we have them all kitted up. We've already cut the panels up. There's 12 of them. It works out to like two and a half yards of fabric. The kit, uh, when you look for it, is $33.77. You get your 15% off if you want to buy it this weekend. But my friend... Um, Michelle had a great idea. I was telling her about this idea. I was like, man, I got to make 12. I got to bind 12 wall hangings. She said, make them reversible. I said, what a brilliant idea. And so there's six of these instead of 12 of these. Thank you very much. Um, so I have a little demonstration on how to baste things that are reversible so you don't waste fabric and they are centered on top of each other. So I'm excited to show you. Um, I sell a quilt on my Etsy site that is a map of the United States on one side and a map of the world on the other side. And I don't want to waste fabric. I got to try to center them. And I, my husband and I are trying to base this thing. It took us forever. And then one day, not very long ago, I came up with this idea. And I was like, okay, I'm never doing it any other way again. So I'm going to show it to you now. So here is, I've left one unquilted so you could see. Here is January, right? And what I did is I fold it in half and I found, whoop, I was off on that. I found the center mark on each side. So there's going to be a pin on all four sides pointing in. So I've already done this this morning. So there's a pin here, pin here, pin here, and a pin here. Okay. So I'm going to lay this down and Mark, why don't we do an overhead shot here? Clear out my space. So here is my first one, and I, I, want the, I want the top of the handout, sorry, the top of the wall hanging to be up away from me. And then I'm going to put a piece of 
batting down, mostly covers. Oh, got to move it over a little bit. I cut my batting maybe an inch bigger all, on all four sides. And then finally, a my that was January, so this is going to be February. And now you see these pins. Whoops, I lost a pin. Um, hang on, let me find a new pin because this doesn't work without. Here's here's a T pin. That's, I got it. So I'm going to now. I have to figure out where. Oh, there it is. Found it on the ground. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to fold this in half. I'm going to kind of pull the center. That's my center. I'm sure you can figure out where this is going. But now I'm just going to lift this a little bit. Okay, and this pin needs to go up this way and this way. And now I can look at it here. That looks like it's well centered. And then I'm going to look down here. Yep, that one looks good too. You see there's my pin. Let me bring it over just a tad. Let me check the sides one more time. Yep, can you see where those, those two red pins are right on top of each other and right on top of each other there. So now I'm centered. Now it is, um, I'm not gonna waste any fabric by having to cut off extra on one side or the other. And we can do a regular shot now, Mark. Um, so now I'm ready to quilt this quilt. Um, you know, it's small enough that I don't even think I spray basted. I think I went back through with a um, with an iron and a little mist and just kissed them together really well with heat and water. And they're stuck together really well. And now I'm ready to bait, to quilt it, well, mark it. So I wanna talk about, I've talked about this before um, and you may, have, may or may not, let's do an overhead again. So you can see my quilting here are these diamonds. So I, it's basically a crosshatch design. Let me back up a minute to say, whenever you quilt a panel, people are always coming up and saying, okay, here's my panel, it's Winnie the Pooh. Do I quilt around Winnie the Pooh? And then what do I do on the outside? And what do I do on the inside? You know, how do you quilt these panels that are so cute? You don't really want your quilting to show very much. You really want whatever's you've got on the panel to show. I came up with this and I use it a lot. And I'll show you how I do it. And I also wrote a blog post about it, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But the reason I like it is instead of, if you were to do 45 degree lines, you'd end up with squares on point, which is fine. But I think the diamonds just elevate it. Um, they're just, they're just, to me, they're better than the 40, than the little squares on point. Um, and they're very, very easy to do. So I'm gonna do a little demo on how to mark it. And then I used a walking foot and I elongated my stitch a little bit. You could also use just a real simple serpentine stitch. You could also, once you mark it, just free motion oh, serpentine stitch. You could also use a double needle. Um, so you have lots of options here. If you take my machine quilting with, with a walking foot, we talk about this design a lot because it's very useful. When I do buy Annie bags, oftentimes I will use this to quilt my pieces. So how are we gonna mark that? All right, so all I have to do is find my Hera marker. So let's, uh, let's do an overhead again, Mark. So this is called a Hera marker, and this is mine at home. You can order them online. I've had a, I think I, I, took, it, I, took, I took the one that was in a package back, but that is, has a very sharp, not so sharp it'll cut anything, but it's a sharp piece of plastic, and this is magic. So I'm gonna take my ruler, and we're gonna talk about this ruler in a minute, but most good quality rulers have a 60 degree lines, and they have 45 degree lines, and they have 30 degree lines. We're gonna talk about the 60 degree lines today. So I'm gonna take this 60 degree line, and I'm gonna line it up, move this out of the way. I'm gonna line this line up with a, with a known line on my quilt, which happens to be here. Hopefully you can see that, I laid it right on top. So now I can take my hair marker, and what I'm gonna do, it's gonna put a crease in the fabric just long enough for me to quilt on it. By the time I'm finished quilting, you will not see this crease. It doesn't put down a colored mark, it just puts down a crease. And while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the other side and you'll see what it looks like. Hopefully you can, yeah, you can see those lines. 
So you've got this line here and this line here. And then I'm going to move my ruler over two inches. I can move it up a little bit. And I can mark it again on the right and mark it again on the left. Again, following that 60 degree line here. And so I'm going to march all the way there and all the way here with those lines. And then watch carefully. Here's the magic. We're going to turn this over till we get to come back here. So we get to the other 60 degree line and it lines up still with the same line. And I'm going to mark this way. When I'm done marking the whole quilt, I promise you those lines will be there long enough for you to quilt this quilt with your walking foot or your free motion if you want to free motion the lines. I have this little game I play um, where if I start here because there's nothing attached and I go all the way to the bottom, oh look, there's a line right by. So I just turn around and come over here. And look, there's a line right by it. So I turn and go this way. And look, there's a line right by it. So I come, so it's kind of like that that old pong game where you just keep bouncing off the edges. And if you do it just right, you can put your needle down once and do the whole thing. So it's kind of a fun thing if you're if you're into that kind of thing. Um, so hopefully that inspired you. We can go back to the regular. Hopefully that inspired you another very simple way to quilt a quilt. You could quilt this absolutely if you wanted to quilt it this way. You absolutely could do that. But but for panels, it's the bomb. So oh, so I was going to tell you my blog post. Um, and if you can see that, let's do an overhead. So um, tinyurl.com, capital M, you have to do these capitals, capital M, capital J, capital D, diagonal, and then capital M and capital Q. So MJ, diagonal, MQ, machine quilting. Um, if you go to this uh, link, you will find a blog post that I have covered every possible bit of information about this technique right there. Um, Barbara from Raleigh, hurricane is coming through. My son just moved to Wilmington, North Carolina, and my husband is headed there today with a U-Haul truck. So if you're so inclined to say a little prayer for my husband and use the U-Haul truck, I would appreciate that. I, he better call me when he gets there because I think he's going through like a hurricane right now. Um, I said, could you just do this on Sunday? No, no, we have to do it. On, we have to do it on Saturday. So, um, yeah. So thank you for joining us from Raleigh. I'm glad you still have power. Um, what else did I say? Oh, this, um, I believe I put this binding on my favorites page because I think it really went well. I love this fabric because it's printed on the diagonal, but I cut um, lengthwise pieces to put the binding on. And I just, it went so well that I went ahead and put it on my favorites page. So if you love these panels, they're on my favorites page. You buy them all at once. Um, and I think they're packaged. Yeah, they're packaged in different ways, but there's all 12 months in each package. And again, the package costs $33.77 minus your discount. You will get all 12 months. You could certainly make 12 wall hangings if you wanted to. If you do, you're going to need two yards of the black and the white, but I only used one yard of the black and white and I had some left over um, for the binding. Oh, and then let me talk about the hangers. Um, I went to Jacksonville last week with some friends and I was like, okay, I've got a, a reversible wall hanging. I got to figure out how to hang it. And we came up with this idea. Let's do an overhead shot here. So it is, I made these little fabric tabs so I took some fabric, folded it over twice, sewed it down, cut it two and a half inch. Probably if I were to do it again, I'd probably make it three inches. Um, and then inserted it into the binding as I bound the quilt. And I put it on the pretty much on just the very edges. And so then here it is. And don't ask me where I got this because I got it out of this piece of wood out of my stash. And it's actually a little too big. So I'm going to have my husband go to the home desperate and find me a smaller dowel with some balls to put on either side of it. And if they don't have it, I guess Amazon or Etsy or something to, to end that. But that's, and then when I get to my mom's, my mom lives in senior living. So she has her own little apartment. And so I was just going to put two command hooks on the door and then this will just hang from the command hook. So super simple, no string, none of that. Um, just a simple way to hang those wall hangings. So hopefully that all made sense. If there's any questions, um, 
Yes, Regina, the links are there. I was just asking if anybody wanted to cut and paste those links onto the comments page. That would be great. If not, we will figure it out. Thank you so much. Any questions about these wall hangings? I'd love to love to answer them. Clean out my space here. All right. And I'm going to get another drink because I've been talking a lot today. Blech, I don't usually talk this much. I'm usually sitting at home and sewing. All right. We are going to continue on, as I said. Oh, I may not have said this, but um, I have a lot of content today. So hang in there. Lots of good stuff. Everybody had a great time this morning. Um, what is my next thing I wanted to talk about? Tortilla pockets. What the heck is a tortilla pocket? So quick story, colleagues come over, there was about 15 of them for tacos. Like, how am I going? I usually make my own tortillas, but I didn't have time. So I bought some at the store. And then how am I going to warm up enough tortillas so 15 people can start eating at the same time? I, I um, went online. How do you keep, how do you get tortillas warm? There's all these different ideas. And at the end, they said, oh, you just go on Amazon and buy one of these fabric pockets. Yeah, I don't think so. I think I'm going to make them on my own. And so I figured out how to make it. And here I, here I am with a handout. Again, the handout um, is three pages. And if you are, yeah, oh, sorry, four pages. I've been saying three pages all day. If you are um, wanting the handout, I would encourage you to go back to where you found the link for this show and there will be a link for Mary Janine's handouts. And you can click on that. You can either print it or you can pull it up on another device. And uh, Karen says she would like to order. Um, if you want to order anything I've talked about, you go to my favorites page, which again, it's linked on the place where you found to come here, whether it is your email or the Facebook page or wherever it's linked to come here, there's also a link for my favorites page and my handout. Thank you, uh, Marie, for putting the handout right there where everybody can click on Marie's, con is it Marie? I wanna say it right, thank you, Marie. And she's, if you click on that link for the handout, you will get to this and you can either print it out or you can watch it, this on a separate device. And Marie, since you were so smart to do that, if you could put up my, um, put up the link for my favorites page, I would be so appreciated. Um, and then Karen can click on my favorites page and you can order whatever your little heart desires. Okay, here we go. So this is a taco uh, tortilla warmer. How does it work? I put 10 tortillas from the store into this little pocket, put my pocket in the microwave, 30 seconds, done. It not only warmed them, well, the microwave warmed them, but it keeps them warm while you're serving them. And then once everybody finished, well, like the last two, I put them on a plate and I warmed up 10 more ready to go for the next 10 tortillas, tacos, whatever, burritos, whatever they wanted them for. So as you can imagine, it's a very simple sew. So we're going to talk about how to do that. And it's also on the handout that I wrote. Thank you, Marie, for, for putting up my favorites page as well. So all you have to do is click on my favorites page link. You will see all the things I'm talking about. Thank you so much. Okay, let's do this. So basically, we're talking about two quilts that are bound together on the bottom. Okay, and I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about how to do that. Okay, so we're gonna start with, let me unclip this. Let's do an overhead mark. We need basically two quilts worth of fabric. So I have a liner and there was some cheap muslin that I happen to have in my stash. If you've got something cute for the inside, please. This is wrap and zap. So it is guaranteed to be 100% cotton batting you do not want to get any polyester in your microwave. So any stitching that you do has to be with cotton thread, 100% cotton bottom and top. You cannot use any polyester thread in here. Um, and this wrap and zap, yes, you might be able to use other cotton battings, but I can't guarantee that they would be, uh, there wouldn't be a polyester scrim on top because Sometimes they put a very thin polyester scrim. So get the wrap and zap. It's cheap. It comes, I want to say 25 inch to a uh, 25 inches wide on the bolt. So to make one of these, you just need 12 inches or you know what is whatever that one third of a yard um, by three, and then you can make by three quarters of a no by one yard, and you could make three tortilla wraps. 
Okay. Um, so here we are. That's my lining fabric. There's my wrap and zap batting. And then my fun taco fabric, which is on my favorites page. So that's one quilt. I'm probably going to give that a quick press to make sure everything's stuck together. And then here's my other quilt, as it were. Uh, cheap muslin. Could be anything. My wrap and zap. And of course, I say anything. It's got to be 100% cotton. And then my nacho fabric. So I have nachos on the other side just to be fun and different. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a basting stitch and go all the way around just to hold everything into place. And then I'm going to show you what I quilted. I would, I would recommend just a little bit of quilting. So I just did a five-point star. And that, a picture of that, you might even need to practice your five-point stars if you don't remember them from kindergarten. It's on my handout. But just start at one, one side. You make a greater than symbol. You cross over. Um, one line, cross over two lines, and then you come home. So um, it's a pretty, pretty simple, pretty simple design. You could do anything. You could just do a couple straight lines and call it a day. Okay, so these have been basted. They've been given a star because I'm quilting. And now, put those aside, you need to quit bind just a little bit. You notice these are separately, whoops, here we go, separately bound, right? Just, just from here to here. So that's about 16 inches. So I put 16 inches of binding here, 16 inches of binding here. It has to be bias binding. If you're going to bind that with straight of grain binding, you're going to have lots of trouble and it's just not worth it. Bias binding just goes down beautifully. I'm going to have a demonstration in a minute about how to make bias binding. Okay, 16 inches there, 16 inches there. Finally, I'm going to kiss them together, linings put together, and then we're going to bind from here all the way to there. You are done. That's it. That's the project. So simple. You could embroider this. You could say, you know, enjoy your tortillas. You know, it's taco night, taco Tuesday. Um, I had a cute, I might, you can put it on the overhead. Whoops. Hang on a second. We've got some technical difficulties. Give us just a second. Okay. Let us know if we're still up. Let us know if we're still, uh, if we're still live, please. Okay. Um, where was I? I had a, I had my, I have a nephew who, um, are we still up? Somebody tell us. Um, a nephew who sells, has a taco truck. And I saw this, I saw this cute tip about, you know, you should always know where your, where your tacos, where your food is from. And she he said, I don't know where tacos have been born or something like that. Yes. Okay. Marita, thank you. I Hopefully that means, yes, we are still on. Yes, we're still live. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're, we're figuring this out. We're good. Um, oh, I was gonna tell you about bias binding. Um, I know that there is a technique out there for cutting your fabric into big triangles and then sewing them back together and then you have continuous binding. But to be honest, I do bias binding so seldom that I have to go look for that and it's, it's more trouble than it's worth. So this is how I cut bias binding. And it's very simple. It works for my brain. So here's a, here's a couple yards of fabric that I just snagged off the, uh, off the remnant pile. I'll put it back when I'm done. Um, and I'm going to take this yardage. So it's, it looks like it's two yards of fabric. Selvage is on the side, cut is on the top. I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to match up the top edge with the side edge. All right, and here we go. This, this piece on this side here is now a 45 degree bias, right? Problem is it's way too long to cut. So what I do is I fold that bias line down on itself. Let's do an overhead mark. So I took that long, long line, just leave it right there, we're good. And I folded it on itself. So now it's a much shorter, I gotta figure this out a little bit here. Now it's, a, it's only half the size. That's on the bias edge. And I'm ready to cut as many strips as I need to cut. It may be a little bit longer than my ruler, but it's not so long. And now I can take my ruler. And what I probably do in this case is I just cut off the Maris little fold all the way down like that. And then I'm ready to cut whatever size strips I need to cut because those are 45 degrees true bias. Strip, strip, strip. 
That's how I, I personally cut bias strips. Yes, you can do this out of a fat quarter. You can do it out of half a yard of fabric. In fact, my red was a half a yard in my stash and I just, I folded it this way. I'm gonna do it one more time. Let's do a, a, a big, uh, big view here, Mark. So I'm gonna take my fabric, whatever size, let's pretend, let's pretend it is a half a yard of fabric. So pretend in your in your head this is a half a yard whoops, half a yard of fabric and I want to cut bias strips out of it. Let's do an overhead now, Mark. So here it is. I'm going to take this fabric and I'm going to take the raw edge and line it up to the um, to the selvage edge. And now this is a bias edge, and I can take my ruler and I can start cutting bias bias pieces that way. Very very simple. Um, if there's any questions, let me know. Um, yes, that's very nice. Um, and I want to talk about this ruler for a minute. Um, quilter select. If you are not familiar with quilter select, I try not to use this, this word very often, but these rulers for me are game changers. Um, I have used a lot of different rulers in my day. I wish you were here. You could feel it. There's a rough bottom to this that will never, ever go away. And literally, this does not ever move on the fabric. It, it will not slide. The other side will slide on the fabric because it's smooth. But this one will not slide on the fabric. Um, it's a few dollars more than all the other rulers, but I am slowly and slowly and carefully switching all my rulers over to Quilter Select rulers. Whoops, Quilter Select rulers um, because of that. The other really nice thing is it starts with a... It starts with a one in the clear and goes to 12, uh, sorry, 24. And then over here in the dark numbers, it's one to 24. So it used to be with my other rulers, if I wanted to count to one, I'd have to figure out, okay, where's my one? But here it's on both sides. So I don't have to keep moving my ruler around. The other thing is I wanted to talk about this nice thing. Um, this is a gripper and um, I like it because I am Mrs. Efficient and it is the fastest way to pick up my ruler. I don't necessarily use it for, um, for holding my ruler. I'll talk about that in a second, but you know, I don't have any fingernails. So if I'm going to pick up this ruler, I have to move it to the side of the table and then lift it up because I can't get my fingernails under here because I have none. So this is a fast way to grab my ruler. This ruler, I probably use this 90% of all, all my cuts is this ruler. My eight and a half ruler is probably 7%. And then I use some other specialty rulers once in a while, but this is, this is my go-to ruler. So I want to make it easy to lift up and use. Um, so that's, we have that on my favorites page. Um, and again, so just real quick, if you've ever taken a class with me, you've heard all my rotary cutting tips, but if you do not have a quilter select ruler, and if you're going to hold it, it's probably going to shift. I'm exaggerating, but as you're cutting, it's going to do this, right? And that's just annoying as all get out. Um, that's not really going to happen with Quilter Select. So I don't hold my ruler like this. You should be putting part of your hand off the ruler and holding it like this. Not like this, not like this, not like this, and definitely not like this got to be partially off the ruler. So what I'll do is I'll just use this and put my hand around it. Cut, stop, walk my hand up here and finish the cut. So please give that a try and get out of the bat, this bad habit because that's not holding your ruler straight or on the fabric well at all. Yes, Jan, I have a pop socket on most of my rulers, but this one is a little too big for a pop socket. If you're wondering what a pop socket is, what did I do with my phone? Here's my phone. This is, this is a pop socket and it opens up. There it is. So it closes and then it opens up and that's how I keep my phone from falling out of my slippery hands. Um, and I love my pop sockets for rulers because I can, it, my ruler is an extension of my hand. Pretend that's a ruler and I could just move it and cut. Love pop sockets for rulers. I'm trying to convince Mark to buy them, to put some, put sewing studio on there. And we, we would love to be able to um, sell them or I don't know what, but that would be an awesome, awesome thing for rulers. Um, so yes, right now Dollar Tree has them for a dollar and a quarter, but, it, but until, and then when we have them, you're going to buy them from us. <laughs> okay. 
So that was all about rulers and bias. Hopefully that bias made sense. Um, let's see, any other good questions or comments? Thank you for all of your comments. I really appreciate it. And that was everything to do with my tortillas, tortilla warmers. So we're going to talk now about, I've got one, two, three more projects. So this is one of them. I told you I had a lot of content. Um, and my disc, the discount code for today until Sunday evening, midnight is TTT. If you order anything on my favorites page, really anything at the store, you'll get to 15% off. I just put up the favorites page because it's easier to find all the stuff that I'm talking about. All right. Um, I want to talk about stiff gift bags as opposed to my my drawstring gift bags that I talk about usually in October, November. Um, so what, what it is, is, you know, you go to the dollar store or whatever, and you pick up some gift bags to gift. And those bags are good for what, two or three uses, and then they get all nasty and you have to, I don't know, take your lunch in them or something. Um, this instead is made out of fabric. I used Tula Pinks. I came in here a couple days ago and picked up some Tula Pinks giraffes. And I love the name of this fabric. It's called Neck All Day. And um, love the giraffes. So this took one, sorry, half a yard of fabric to make. And I, we're going to do a little demo on this. But I'm, I made a, I've talked about this before. And I came up with a, with a new little thing for this, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, so just a little, how is it stiff? I use a product called Deco Bond, uh, which is on my favorites page. You can also use something called Craft Fuse, which is, I don't, couldn't find it at the store. It might be there and I didn't look very hard. Um, so you can look for that. But Deco Bond works great and it's on my favorites page. What it is, is a fusible heavy duty stabilizer. Maybe you've got some in your stash. Um, I happen to, in fact, mine was so old that I went to go press it and I hit it for five seconds and it didn't stick. So I hit it for 10 seconds and then I use my clapper and you push it, you don't actually clap with this. It's a piece of hardwood. We sell them, it's on my favorites page. And once you hit it with an iron, you immediately hit it with the clapper, don't hit it. Push down with the clapper, let the clapper sit there for 10 or 15 seconds and you get a nice sharp crease. I'm gonna use this tw in twice in today's demonstrations, but I couldn't live without it. It sits right next to my ironing board and I use it for all kinds of, if I want nice sharp seams, I use my, use my clapper. Um, so anyway, what was I saying? Um, so it has, it has handles. I am, we're going to talk this morning about grommets and how to use them and leftover. So when I cut that half a yard of my Tula pink fabric, deco bond, deco bonded the whole thing. And then I cut maybe three or four inches off one side and I made little tags. So this is truly green and environmentally friendly because you're going to put your, you're going to write your little note on this little tag. And then when you gift it, there's a, there's six more tags that you're going to leave, leave in the bottom of the bag for the next five or six people that gift this bag away. So it's very green and very earth friendly to make fabric, sorry, to make bags out of your stash. Um, so let's do a quick little demo. It's on the handout, but you may you may like to see how it's made. Well, that's this is an old, you might recognize this old Amy Butler pattern. I figured it was time to get some new, new cute fabric, but there's a there's one out of my stash, and then some cute ladybugs. And of course, they all have extra little gift tags to put in the bottom. So I now I need to start using these so I can get new fabric. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're going to apply your deco bond over the whole flat piece of fabric. So whatever size it is. I don't remember how wide deco bond comes, but you'll want to pay attention to that when you order it to make sure you have enough. I'd buy two or three yards and then you'll have enough for three or four bags. So you apply it in the flat and then you're going to fold up your whole thing. Let me turn it right side or this is the top. So you're going to sew a seam down the side. You're going to sew a seam down the corner. I like to use my wavy blade across the top 
whatever you've got that would make a nice edge. If you just if you just um, cut it and make it frayed, if you have some pinking shears, you could do that. I happen to have a wave blade on my rotary cutter, a separate rotary cutter, so that's what I used in that way. Okay, so I've sewn the side, sewn the bottom, put my hand inside. I'm sure most of you know how to box your corners. Let's do an overhead mark. So if we 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 uh, boxing the corners, you take it, it here. It is flat. I'm going to put my hand inside and kind of splay it out a little bit. And now I have a triangle. And if the box is this big, I will probably go and I will draw where I want to sew to make sure that both of my corners have the exact same size because you don't want a big triangle and a small triangle because then your box won't lay flat. So you're going to sew those and it's going to look like, let me open this up so you'll see what it looks like. Did I cut those off? No, I did not. Um, fold this right side, wrong side out. And there they are, they are cut. So they look kind of funky. They look like little duck bills or ears or whatever. Um, Mark, we're gonna, we're gonna switch out to the, thank you. Um, and we're gonna fold the top down just a little bit to give it a little extra strength and make it look nice on the top, just the way you would a paper, paper bag. This is where we're gonna install the eyelets and we'll talk about that in a second. And then finally, you need to press the heck out of this bag. It's gonna turn into kind of a lunch bag idea, just like your paper bag. Everything is pressed. And here's the thing I mentioned before that I did. Once I pressed everything and used my, um, my clapper, again, it's, a cl it's called a clapper. We don't clap with it. We just push, kind of push down and then just let it, let it be for a few minutes, um, 20 seconds. What I did is I sewed, let's do an overhead mark. I, see, I don't know if you can even see it, but I sewed an eighth of an inch, a top stitch. Everywhere I pressed, I, I did a top stitch through the both layers. So across the bottom and up to the other side, and I did that for both sides. So you can see how defined those edges are. They're not just kind of mushy like this one. They're, this is fine, but I really like how Defined just a eighth of an inch top stitch down the side, and of course, cut off your all your little bits of thread when you're done. Let's talk about an eyelet, the eyelet cutter. These eyelet cutters, I swear, every time I go to source them, they are hard to find. Um, right now, we don't have the, the squeezy kind, we've got the hammer kind, but I'm going to show you. Maybe you have one of these in your stash and you don't even realize it. This is a very old fashioned one. I got from a neighbor friend when I was a kid, so it's very special to me, but I still see them out there um, in the wild, but they, I'm not sure you can buy this particular model anymore. I'm gonna show you how it works anyway, and um, if you've got one in your stash and you've never used it, you can see how easy it is. Here's the, I use, I've cut these in this bag because this is fusible Trico, so when I'm making um, drawstring bags and I make them a lot, and I use eyelets, I will iron a little piece of Trico on the back of my single layer of fabric because if you do this all by itself, sometimes if you use it a lot, it's gonna tear out of the fabric. And so, but I'm just gonna do it through a single layer. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna press anything through. So I just used my seam ripper to cut a little hole, maybe a little too big, but that's okay. I'm gonna take my eyelet. So this is a one piece eyelet. You can see it from the side here. Um, it's, it's kind of thick. It's just one piece to it. So the way you install it, there's a little stem here and I'm gonna put it with the, with the good side toward the bottom and the stem of the eyelet is, is on the stem here. So that means that I need to put the right side of my fabric on the tool like so and squeeze it and now you have a beautiful eyelet that it's um, it's a little rough on the inside. It's not too bad. Um, I've been using these for years and, and it doesn't seem to matter that it's a little rough, but it's a beautiful eyelet. I saw YouTube the other day. I was watching to see how other people were doing it. And this person didn't even cut the hole. So then there's all this fabric and it was a bit, bit messy on the inside. But if you just use your seam ripper just to cut, I cut a little tiny little eighth of an inch hole and I make like a little V with it. So I just cut, cut a little V, it's barely, barely there, but it's enough to get your eyelet through and that's all that, 
all that matters. So if you have one of these guys, great. If you don't, you can come in and buy the one that's um, that you put. It's you you can nail it in or hammer it in, and that works pretty well too. Send me an email if you're unsure how to use it. I found a really good um, YouTube, and my email is on the bottom of every handout. And I found a good YouTube that I can send you a link for, and she explains. Um, how to use all the different tools to make eyelets. So hopefully that makes sense. And let's see if there's any questions. Harbor Freight called a grommet tool. Now realize their grommets are larger than eyelets. Those eyelets I was working with, that's my favorite size for all the different bags I use, but grommets are everything bigger than that. So this is like 5 32nd of an inch. That's the official size of those grommets. So yes, you can buy tools to put grommets in, at Harbor Freight, but probably not eyelets. Another place to look would be um, card making because they do it in scrapbooking and card making. Sometimes you can find the eyelet tools there as well. It, they are hard to source though. Um, okay, got another quilt for you and then I have another sewing project and then we're done, I promise. So we're gonna take this down. And if you turn the page of your hand out, this is um, my quilt called Suburbia. It, little Houses is on the last page of your handout. And I'm gonna get another drink because I am thirsty. Aren't those houses cute? I love these houses so much. This quilt actually lives in my living room on a quilt rack because I just love, these houses just make me happy. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how to make a house. Um, so this tutorial, actually, it's, I got it mostly from bonniehunterquiltville.com. So I give you the link on the handout of where you can go to get step-by-step -step instructions. But I'm going to tell you some of the changes that I made to make it my own. So let's go through that. And let's just look at the quilt here for a moment. Um, we don't even need a close-up, I don't think. Um, so we've got a house block here. And then we've got these four long triangles that make the houses tip back and forth. You certainly don't have to do that, but I think it gives it a lot of movement and charm to be able to put them on point like that. Um, and what else? I use sashing. I think Quiltville, uh, Bonnie uses her sashing is a lot wider than mine. I'm just a big fan of thin sashing, so that's what I use. But if you like wider sashing, you certainly could. I love cornerstones. I think that really adds to the quilt. Um, I use different black and whites for different ones. So there's probably some duplicates, but you'd have to look for a while to find the duplicates. Um, the border is just a simple, yep, thank you. Border is just a simple batik green with more lime green binding. Um, this was a great place to use your scraps. And in fact, all of the strips in this quilt use two and a half inch, I'm sorry, two inch strips. I happen to cut my binding at either two and a quarter or two and an eighth most times. So I have a box of, you know, the leftover binding because you always have to make a little more and the little strips go in there. And then, so this is a great way to use up your leftover binding strips or two and a half inch strips. You just cut the half inch off. So lots of ways to use up scraps. Um, I did dip into my browns for the roofs, but pretty much everything else was out of my stash because I got a lot of fabric. Um, so I've ma made this quite a while ago. So we are now gonna do an overhead mark so I can talk about the block, how to make it. And here it is finished. And here is a tip for you. Um, when I know I'm going to be sashing my blocks, I add my bottom sashing, my cornerstone and my side sashing. So every block looks like this, rather than putting up all my blocks, laying it out the way I want it, and then having to put sashing on each block. I know I'm gonna sash it. So you might as well put your sashing on now, just an extra little step. And then when you're all done sewing all your blocks together, you're going to have to put sashing across the top of your quilt and across the left side of your quilt, but that's okay. So there's the there's the um, block. The first thing I'm going to talk about is this little piece here. You're, you have two chimneys. This is an expensive house. It has two chimneys, two fireplaces. So here's we, how we do it. Rather than cutting a bunch of uh, squares and sewing them together, instead, 
you cut some strips and then sew your strips together and then cut them as needed. So that's a, a quick and dirty way to put your two, um, two chimneys on, okay? So there's that. So let's just build our little house here. We're gonna be construction workers for a minute. Um, there is my roof. And all it is is a strip of fabric. And again, it's all on quiltville.com and her free free, free pattern. Two uh, snowball corners there for the, for the roof. And then we can't forget our piece across the top of the house. And then, and then, let's see. One, and there's my window, some more wall, and my door, and some more wall. So once you sew all those together, of course, they're the same size as that. That's the house block right there, okay? That's the house block. Um, these could be the same or they could be different. I just kind of like them the same. Um, any old brown will work for a roof. And of course the house, all this house fabric, of course, has to be the same for it to make sense. Um, one more thing. So we've got all that. Let's say, let's say I've sewed that together. And I want to put these uh, triangles on. Yes, you could cut a bunch of triangles, but you know me, I've got a much easier way to do that. We're gonna take a long, and this is probably in my handout. If not, it's in her handout. Um, yes, so if you look at the handout here, for each house, I cut two black and white triangles, three inches by 12 inches. And then here's my rectangle. And if I cut the rectangle this way, then my house is going to tilt to the right. If I cut my triangle the other way, if I cut it this way, southeast to northwest, then my it's going to tilt the other way. You can ho hopefully see, see how that would work. So let's go back up and look at the quilt again, Mark. So half of my blocks tilt to the right and half of my blocks tilt to the left. And then I just checkerboarded them. And I just think that gives the quilt so much movement and charm. It's just, you just eat it up. Um, so yeah, that's how those, that's how those triangles. And yes, 12 inches is very long. I don't need all of that. Yes, there's gonna be a little bit left over, but that's how big it needs to be for you to make it that way. You could make it four by 12, you could make it uh, five by 12, you'd have bigger and bigger pieces, but I found that that was a good size for, for what I was, the look I was looking for. So lots of ways you can make this your own. Any questions about this quilt? All right. And then again, the sashing pieces um, are cut to size. Here's one with the cornerstone and here's one without the cornerstone and they go right onto the quilt block and then you have a whole bunch of those cute guys and that your quilt doesn't have to be as big as mine because I just couldn't stop making houses so this this thing is pretty massive I didn't even open it up all the way but it's it's big so um I'd say probably 70 by 80 or something something ridiculous like that so let me know if you have any questions about that otherwise I will pack up my little demo here and we will move on one more project I was busy. I couldn't, I couldn't stop coming up with new things to tell you guys about. So hopefully, hopefully you are enjoying it and getting something out of this. Okay, here we go. Money bags. Uh, another thing that I saw when I was traveling this summer was a lot of the shops had this fun little, um, these fun little wallets. Let's do an overhead mark. So this is a little wallet that has not one, but two little pockets. So a great way to gift a, a um, gift card this Christmas. You could use Christmas fabric or just, this is Tula Pink. Um, this blue one is left over from the front of my, or the back of my picnic quilt. Um, you don't have to have a strap if you don't want to. I, in fact, I make it, when I continue to make these, I probably won't use a strap. Uh, I also changed the way I did the Velcro and we'll talk about that. But again, two pockets. And it's amazing that this was made out of one piece of 18 inches by five inch fabric. And the beauty of this design is that it, com it comes, we have this um, uh, fusible interfacing that's pre-printed. When you buy one on my favorites page for $2.40, you get three money bag wallets out of it. So if you wanted to make six 
wallets, you would buy two of these for a total of $4.80. You can't beat that with a stick, minus your 15% discount. So all you need to do then is provide fabric, five inches by 18 inches, some Velcro, which I'll talk about in a minute. And if you wanna have a strap, I use rat tail here, I use trim here, you know, ribbon, whatever you wanna use, or just not do it. Okay, so you ready for this? We're gonna do a quick little demo. So again, this is everything you get for $2.40. The instructions are written on, the, on there, but I'm gonna tell you, I don't know if it's my glasses or what, but I had a really hard time reading this. So they give you an option to print out your, print out the instructions on a PDF. And, and so I did, and it was much easier to read and lots of pretty pictures. And so I had a hard time, they said it was on the website, but I had a hard time finding it. So once I found it, I created a tiny URL for you. So if you would like to do this and you wanna print out your PDF, here's where you can find it, a tinyurl.com slash capital M, capital J, money bags. And that will take you to this PDF. So you can get your own instructions printed out. You don't have to try to read this brown printing on here that's hard to see for me. Okay, so that's the printout. So let's do a quick demo of how this works. So it's hard to see, but the um, it tells you you're gonna put your loop um, part of your Velcro here. So I just kind of looked at it up in the, um, in the light and I kind of placed it. Remember all the things that you're placing get placed on the fabric side, not on the interfacing side. Ask me how I know. <laughs> um, so your hook Velcro here, we're going to talk about this, why I placed it this way in a moment. And then it tells you where to put the strap. If that, if that you want that, you don't have to have it. And then it tells you to cut a little slit here. And this is actually our turning slit. So you need to do that. Okay, so I've done all that, prepped my fabric. And of course we fused it to the wrong side of the fabric. Um, find my other demos here. Um, yeah, oh, sorry, I'm still back to this one. Um, so I need to put my glasses on because I'll make sure I'm doing this right. So it's hard to see, but there's an A line, let me turn it around, an A line, a B line where I cut the slit, a C line and a D line. So first thing we're gonna do is pinch the D line and bring it down to C. And then we're gonna pinch the B line and bring it down to A. Okay, and I didn't do the most perfect job on that because that's still sticking out, but you get the idea. And this is a really good time to hit it. And by the way, you can't hit it from the iron here because it wrinkles up the, it melts the interfacing. So you have to flip it over and press it from this way. And guess what I used? I used my clapper to get nice sharp creases on that. While I'm waiting for that to dry or, or cool down, I'm working on something else. I come back and I'm gonna fold this in half, right sides together got stitching lines on here for you. And I'm going to stitch down this line. It tells you you can either do a nice curvy one or straight. And I use the curvy line, come across here, another curvy line and down here. So I'm sewing, sewing, sewing. And now we are here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut, you know, you have scissors there, Mark? No, I cut with my rotary cutter. But the other time I had a, I had a mat and I forgot. Oh, there's a mat. Oh, oh it's a really big mat. Scissors on the corner. There I saw. I got him. Thank you. The one thing I forgot. Okay, so we're gonna cut, cut off that excess corner, just to clean it up a little bit, make it easier to turn. Okay, and now that turning pee, that turning hole. There it is. We're gonna use that to flip this right side out. And this is where my, if you don't have a point turner, they're best things since sliced bread. So I was showing you a point turner and a Hera marker. And that's both of those things I keep by my machine at all times. Point those corners out. And then, nope, I did this wrong. One more this way. Because both, both uh, 
Velcros have to be on the same side for this to work. And we're just gonna poke, poke these corners out. Guess what you're gonna do again? You're gonna press this puppy nice and flat. But I wanna talk about these Velcros. Can you see the white Velcro? This one is horizontal. This is not something in the pattern. This is something I like to do when I make this type of thing. This is a one inch piece of Velcro cut in half, so it's very skinny. This is, this is horizontal and this is vertical. The reason I did that is if this gets really stuffed with cash or whatever, you might need a little extra. So it's, it's gonna match up. This piece will match up different places on this vertical and give you more options. You really gotta, I gotta poke these corners out a little bit better. And then I'm gonna press this. You can either top stitch all the way around or just leave it untop stitch, whatever you desire. But that's, that, to me, that's a little bit too much Velcro. I think I may just take that off and redo it. Um, oh, that, that would be hard to do because it's already sewn. They do tell you to close up or hand sew or glue that bottom. But, you know, I'll be honest, I, I'm not going to. I think it's going to be just fine. If a dime gets stuck in, in there, you know, then, then you can go fish it out later. But I think it's just fine without closing that off. But pressed, it looks very sharp. And it's a great way to gift your... Um, gift cards this Christmas, put them in a stocking, and then somebody has a little money bag. These are called money bags for um, for walking around with. So here's the, it's made by Quilt Smart. They're called money bags, and I just love them. I hope you do too. Let's see if we have any good uh, questions or comments. Thank you, Jan. We did. I did have a lot of fun coming up with all these different projects for you. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to do a, a non-overhead uh, shot, Mark. So I can say thank you so much for joining me. Again, the handouts and the favorites page are listed in the comments. Thank you uh, very much um, for doing that for us. And uh, you can scroll up and find them. Click on them to order my favorites. Get your 15% discount today and tomorrow only. So TTT uppercase is your discount code and the handouts and my favorites page are there. So thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in October. Take care. Bye-bye.